The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. <clears throat> we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, and I bring you greetings from our worship team who are here with us. We ask you to uh, like each, uh, 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 what we're doing here uh, with your sharing and with your liking and with your greeting of one another. Uh, let us know that you're there, and uh, let us enable our... Uh, our time together to be shared uh, more broadly. I wanted to have a word as well to say about something that we've done in the past that we're going to continue doing, but in a slightly different way, and that would be our community dinners. Normally, that's the first Wednesday of every month, and uh, we're, we're looking at restarting those, and we thought about the first Wednesday of July, and then we decided, you know, we've broken with some tradition here. We've got a, a, a bit of time we're able to see that, you know, our Wednesdays are very full on a Wednesday evening with things that are going on. We've decided to back it up one day onto Tuesdays. So we're going to be doing that on June the 30th. The other change for uh, the next month or several, we don't know how long, is that this is not a come in and sit down and eat. It's a grab and go. Chris Strager has arrived back. Uh, from the Midwest and, and is eager to be engaging in, in some of that kind of community work. We're sending out word and we're going to do a grab and go where you come by the door here, everything will be here. We're going to do a, a pulled pork uh, sandwich and, and coleslaw and some other things. But it's a way of reaching out, of offering a meal, of offering uh, some togetherness, if only for you and your family and your home, but also a foretaste of what is to come in the months ahead as we really think about when we are able to be together again. Also, in our more uh, distant time, can, we're continuing with our Wednesdays on, on Facebook, uh, our 12, 15, noon-ish kinds of times that we're going to be having our recitals and, and musical gatherings, and as well for my own devotional words that I offer at 2 p.m. So tune in for those. And, and if you missed any, they're always there. That's the neat thing about what we put on Facebook. Continue uh, to pray and to note those who are in our prayer requests that you find in your bulletin. And uh, please continue to send us your requests and let us know of needs that exist. Lift up your hearts. Let us worship God as we open with choral praise.
scripture reading this morning is a very familiar one from the book of Genesis. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge, be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree giving them to you for food. To all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything he had made. It was good, so very good. It was evening, it was morning, day six. Heaven and earth were finished <clears throat> down to the last detail. By the seventh day, God had finished his work. On the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day. He made it a holy day because on that day, he rested from his work. All the creating God had done. This is the story of how it all started, of heaven and earth when they were created. Our other scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians. Very, very apropos for the things that have been happening, I think, in the last couple of weeks. And we need to pay attention to these couple of sentences. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. This is our kids' time, and we don't have any kids with us here in the sanctuary, but I know that there are some on the other side of this camera who are watching. And I wanted to talk to you about camping about camp season and the things that we do when we're out camping. One of the things that I always liked to do when I had my campers at Wesley Woods was to have a cookout. I remember the things that we made that tasted so good. And I remember some things that didn't taste quite so good. But you were outside at a campfire and what wasn't to like? Well, <clears throat> I want to tell you a story about something that happened a number of years ago for a group of campers who were having a cookout and two things in particular that they made. They made chili, and here's a bowl of chili that you could see here. And the other thing that they chose ahead of time was caramel apples. Who doesn't like a caramel apple? Wonderful, they're sticky. Uh, dentists. Dentists do not like caramel apples. Now, there were a whole box of things that were given to the campers when they went to the dining hall and picked these things up and took them out into the woods and started their fire. And there's salt and there's sugar. The salt is for the chili. And the sugar was for the caramel apples. And these were easily known because they were marked. The salt was marked with an S. And the sugar was marked with an S. Nothing could go wrong with this plan, could it? See, now, the difficulty was that the dining hall was used to having people ask for chili and they gave them salt and they were used to having people want to do caramel apples and they gave them sugar 
But this was the first time that anybody had ever said, <clears throat> we'd like to do both. Nobody thought about that. A little bit of salt, <clears throat> a little bit of sugar, but the right thing at the right time in the right place in the right way. God has given us a wonderful creation. It was created and, and it was called good and, and very good. We haven't always done the best job of keeping it good. But God works with us every day to try and bring a sense of, of peace with one another in our creation and, and to fix at times the things that go wrong. I'll tell you how we fixed what went wrong that particular day. All those kids, do you think they were willing to eat that chili? No. Do you think they were willing to eat the caramel apples? No. We brought them back to the dining hall and we gave them peanut butter and jelly and they loved it. Because it was camp. There's always a way through. If we work together, sometimes we'll get a bump along the road. But by God's spirit, we're able to overcome those kind of troubles, those kind of difficulties, because of our God, who goes with us all the way. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks this day for your Holy Spirit, who does not leave us alone or orphaned. We give you thanks for the gift as well of one another and your creation in which to enjoy all the friendships that we know, all the neighbors that we have. Help us, we pray, to be better neighbors and friends with one another this day and every day. Two passages of scripture that were selected for this morning were with purpose. They come to us from our lectionary readings for this day. But in a God moment, we can see that they are so meaningful for the time that we're going through. Both of them, in fact. 
Yes, the, <coughs> the uh, Corinthians passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, says so much about being at peace with one another. But I always go back to the Genesis passage as well, the creation account that speaks about a variety of things being created in a variety of days, a pattern of poetry and the refrain, and it was good, and it was good, and it was very good. We can't always understand where we are at this moment until we think about from where we've come we can't always understand what God's intentions are for us in this moment, except for going back and seeing God's creative work and thinking about God's intentions in that time. When people would ask me, what do I think heaven is like, and, and all the <clears throat> speculative kinds of conversations you can have, so often I've brought it back to those verses at the very beginning of our Bible. What does God intend for us for our future eternity? Well, what did God prepare for us in that early day? A place to be, provision and protection, to walk with us and to be present with us and, and to be at peace which is not just the absence of trouble or harm, but the, the well-being of all people. What does God intend for us in, in, in this moment in time in our nation's life? What are the intentions we see in the work of God in creating this world and making us? But that we are to walk this road together we're to be on this journey of faith with one another. We're to have that, that purpose and meaning and care. Indeed, Adam and Eve, when they're in the garden there in the story as it's told to us, they, they are told to have care for all of creation. Sometimes that word is, is translated dominion. To rule over and if we think of human rule and the kings and queens and emperors of the past, we get the wrong idea of what it means. Authority oftentimes without any responsibility. But God calls us to care for in a way that is much more about care and responsibility. The kind of leadership that the church provides when it decides to light a candle in the darkness. The kind of leadership that the church provides when it binds up the wounds of the brokenhearted. The kind of leadership that the church provides when it says there is an injustice, but let justice roll down like mighty waters. There needs to be a truth spoken. And we will be the prophet who speaks the truth to power says that something is not right, that something is, is broken. Because we look at our world as it is today, and we say this cannot be what God intended for us. And what difference will we make by our words and by our actions as the Spirit comes to tap us on the shoulder and to say, there are tasks to be fulfilled. The kind of word that we heard from Jesus when he said, there are so many hours in the day and I must do my Father's will. That kind of striving. Here again, the words of, of Paul to the church at Corinth. He says, this is his closing. This is his closing and at the end of, of the second letter, Perhaps his last words that he would write to them before his death in Rome. He said, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. 
We have reason for rejoicing. We have a promise that is given to us. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. The earth has not become the good thing that was intended. Human community has not been what creation intended. Our lack of love for one another and care for one another has not been what God intended, but strive that what God's intentions and purposes were might be restored. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And we're told if we do those things and live in those ways, maybe not immediately, maybe not today or tomorrow, but over time, we're given the promise that life will be a better thing, that the world will be a better place. The God of love and peace will be with you. If we take these words and we dwell, we take these words and live them out. I like that word dwell. I, cl I close with, with that thought. The beginning of John's gospel says the word became flesh and dwelt among us, lived with us, came and offered his life for us. Offer your lives in the same way that Christ offered his for the purposes that God will call us to to restore the life and peace that God calls us to be. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, you have taught us through Jesus that our neighbors are not just those who live next door or those who live nearby, but everyone everywhere. And so now, once again, we pray for our world, our neighbors near and far. Lord of heaven and earth, hear our prayer. We pray for victims of injustice, those who live in poverty or who face starvation, who have no roof over their heads. Lord of heaven and earth, hear our prayer. We pray for victims of natural disasters, those whose homes, loved ones, and lives have been destroyed through flood, earthquake, or other catastrophe. Lord of heaven and earth, hear our prayer. We pray for victims of disasters not natural, for those experiencing social turmoil and civil unrest, the upheaval of entire communities, the breakdown of any sense of shared connection. We pray for those who have endured injustice. We pray for those overtaken by rage. We pray for those willing servants who will bind up the nation's wounds, that we may seek malice toward none and charity for all, that together we may know. God's peace, Lord of heaven and earth. We give you our praise. We offer you our prayers. Guided by Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our offertory, another, a third of Lloyd Larson's arrangements, How Great Thou Art.
Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the many gifts received from your people, for their time and their talent expended in many ways, for the gifts that we receive here that go out to serve your purpose in many ways. For all these we ask that they go forth to bring glory to your name and to bring peace to many people. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For our moment for mission today, there is a note that you'll find in your bulletin for the special Sunday for the church, for the Peace with Justice Sunday offering. This gift encourages peace in many ways. Peacemakers, said John Wesley, endeavor to calm the stormy spirits, to quiet their turbulent passions, to soften the minds of contending parties, and if possible, reconcile them to each other. They employ all their strength, all their talents, which God has given them, as well to preserve peace where it is, as to restore it where it is not. It's a tall order, especially in a world of conflict, whether nation against nation or neighbor against neighbor. A timely offering for this time in the life of our church, the life of our nation, and the life of our world. I encourage you to give for our peace with justice. Our closing hymn, number 577, God of Grace and God of Glory. peace of God guard your hearts and minds. May the presence of God ever be among you. May the love of God abide in your journey through. Amen. <laughs>